G'day all and welcome to week 9 of Hardly a Week. Today is Monday the 4th of March and time is just slipping on by. So let's get straight into it and then uh, we can talk about some other stuff at the end. But this first one is from a Korean researcher, Lee Jung Hyung. And this page, uh, from the link, it'll be in Korean when you first look at it, but you can right click and go translate to English. And it just talks about how to decrypt malicious files from MS Defender. What they've gone done is written a Python script and it's demonstrated down the bottom here uh, as they're decrypting it. I am not sure. They probably have linked maybe the Python script so you can use it. I'm sure you can also find one online. I can't see it here. Um, but yeah, it's something that I've had to do before when working cases. It's really interesting to do because normally uh, Defender, when you're trying to collect evidence, especially remotely, will just quarantine stuff. So you need to pull it back and then decrypt it to see what it is. Because some of the descriptions that Windows Defender has is not very helpful. Um, and I think Defender by default, I'm not sure whether it's Defender or another evidence source, but it stores, I think, like a SHA-1 hash somewhere. So you might be able to get around that, but then if you can't like look at it on virus total or it's not anywhere else that hash that's hit, then you do need to pull it and um, decrypt it so that you could pass it to like your reverse engineering team or do some triage yourself. Um, so this is a good one. And then moving on, more of a real world scenario. So I guess how cybersecurity supports uh, the tactical war fighting methods that different countries are using. It references another talk here to go look at, which I'm interested to go and have a look. I think maybe, yeah, it's a YouTube video, so that's really good. Um, what's interesting here, so what's targeted government, military, intelligence agencies, and then the second is critical infrastructure. So what a lot of war fighting countries will do is use the cyberspace to support their tactical objectives. So they're trying to do something in the real world uh, and they're using cyberspace to sometimes achieve that objective. Um, that can be from reducing supplies, like attacking critical infrastructure. It's really difficult because I think at the moment, cyber war, at least it wasn't maybe like five years ago, the last time I looked, but cyber warfare still isn't um, in the rules of war fighting in terms of if you do a cyber attack, it doesn't constitute a act of war. Um, but you will see a lot of countries, uh, particularly with the Russian-Ukraine conflict, there was a lot of concern around how Russia were going to use cyberspace to then support their warfighting ability, um, even if that was pressuring companies who were linked to Ukraine um, and attacking them. So this is a really good read. I'm excited to watch the video as well to see what that talk is. This one's actually not quite that long. Um, but yeah, definitely come and check this one out and have a look. Finally, or not finally, second last one, um, demystifying 8 base threat hunting. So the name just kind of like interested in me. And then when I clicked on it, what was interesting is it's just another ransomware group. So ransomware as a service. Uh, I've been out of incident response for a while. So it's interesting to see the different ones that are around. A lot of them have links to each other because they're reusing each other's code and modifying it um, and then updating their tactics. So new ransomware. Yeah, so you can see here, new ransomware group Crypt BB is 8Base. So they kind of like stop and members change groups and then they reuse each other's code and their their whole kind of like customer base and that kind of thing. So um, I haven't read through this one yet, but it'll be interesting to read through and see how similar it is to uh, other ransomware actors that I've looked at before. The last one is, I guess, not within APAC, which is where I generally try and target things, but if you're not aware, I've spoken about this before last year on some of the other episodes, but DFRWS, which is oh, Digital Forensics Research Workshops, Review Workshops, I forget. Uh, they run this in Australia as well. I think this year, I can't remember whether it was this year or last year, but they, they're in Singapore, but generally it runs in Australia as well. Uh, it brings together, well, it tries to bring together industry and research and it's heavily focused on on research so a lot of the talks are from 
academics. Um, some of the really good talks that I've seen are academics that work in industry as well or engage with industry to research something in particular. So yeah, this is always really good. I think you can sign up for this one. I haven't checked yet, but you might be able to get like a virtual one so you can watch um, or at least look at, they will post up some of the papers that you can read as well. So uh, if you're interested in kind of the research side of things in cybersecurity, it's definitely hit and miss sometimes. Like some of the research is very outdated to what industry is, but then some of it's really cutting edge, um, particularly if they've been engaged by industry. So that's all I have for this week, nice and short. Uh, I announced the competition winners last week. Um, there was two of them, so I've been in contact with both of them now. Um, and that's been really good. So thank you to everyone who entered and to subscribe to my channel. I've grown quite a lot, so I'm really happy with that. And yeah, I will catch you guys all next week. Um, I've got an episode out now where I spoke to Dave Olsagray. So if you're interested in some long form content, please check that out. Um, and I will be back next week with another Hardly a Week and hopefully some more long form content really soon. So looking forward to continuing doing that. So thanks everyone. Like and subscribe, comment and share. It's always a help and I really appreciate it. Bye.